Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I want to talk about linear equations for a minute. I'm going to show you how to graph a linear equation if you're given the intercept and the slope. I'm going to show you how to interpret an equation for a specific model. I'm going to show you how to find the equation of a line if it's vertical or horizontal. I'm going to show you how to find the x and y intercepts and label them correctly. I'm going to show you how to find the slope of a line given two points. I'm going to show you how to translate an English statement into an equation. And then I'm going to show you how to find the equation of a line in slope-intercept form, whether you're given the slope in the y-intercept or a slope in a point or two points. So if any of those things interest you, please stick around. All right, so first of all, we're going to graph these three equations that have we know our y-intercept, and the y-intercept is at the end, and our slope is here, this coefficient of the x. y-intercept is positive 4, the slope is 3. The y-intercept is negative 4, the slope is negative 2 thirds. Here we don't see anything at the end, so the y-intercept is 0, because we could put plus 0 on there if we wanted, and the slope we don't see is 1, because we always assume there's a 1 next to an x, so we know what the slope in the y-intercept is, even when we don't see it. So how can I write that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and draw um, just a, a second here, I'm going to draw my y-intercept is 4, so I'm going to put a little point here at 4. And then if I go up 3 and over 1, because when I have a slope of 3, I want to think of that as 3 over 1. The top number tells you to rise, since it's positive, we're going to rise 3 places, 1, 2, 3, and then run 1, and there's our next point. And then if I want to, I can connect those two points up and uh, make my line. So that's how I could do that. Um, I'm going to erase that and then go on to the next one. And the second one, I know my y-intercept is at negative 4. So I'm going to uh, draw a point at negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my point. I'm going to use my slope. I know that when I have a slope of negative 2 over 3, what that tells me is go down 2 and over 3 from the last point. So I'm going to go down 2 and over 3, and there's my next point. And then again, I can connect those up with a line, and I will have my uh, equation drawn, my graph of my equation drawn. All right, now the third one, I know that y-intercept is 0 because I don't see anything there. And I also know that um, my slope is 1. So if my y-intercept is 0, then I'm going to put a point here at 0. And my slope being 1, I can think of that as 1 over 1. And so I can know that I can go up 1 and over 1 to get to my next point. So from here I go up 1 over 1, here's a point. I could go up 1 over 1 again. I could go back 1 down 1 because negative negative makes a positive as well. I didn't draw that very nicely. But I could do that too. But I always look at the negative, if there is a negative, as being in the numerator. Once I know that I'm going up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, I can draw my line. And that's how you can draw a line having given three points. In the next equi uh, problem it says the cost at a, I don't want that anymore, the cost at a theme park, the cost C at a theme park when you ride R rides is represented by the equation C equals 3.5 R plus 12. The first question says, how much does it cost to enter the park? Well, we know that R is the cost to ride rides, or is the number of rides that you ride, sorry. The cost is actually over here beside it. But So just to walk in, just think about if you went in and didn't ride any rides, that R would be zero. That means the cost would be 12. So what it's going to cost to walk in is $12, $12 to get into the park. What would it cost to ride two rides? Well, if you're going to ride, cost to ride two rides, you're going to pay that $12 admission, plus you're going to pay 3.5 times 2 to get there. So it looks like this when I plug that in, and then when I simplify that, I get the cost would be $19 to go into that park and to ride uh, two rides. All right, what is y-intercept and what does it mean in this model? Remember up here we said the y-intercept was that number at the end. Well, this is the number at the end, so our y-intercept is 12. And what does that mean? That means what it costs to enter the park. In this case, it's $12 to walk into the park, so that's what that stands for. $12 and it's the cost of admission. 12 is the cost of admission. What's the slope of this model and what does it represent? The slope is always next to this term right here. In this case, that slope is 3.5. And what that represents is the cost per ride. It costs us every time we ride a ride, we're going to pay more and more and more, right? So that's 3.5 and it's the cost per ride. That's interpreting an equation. 
Now you might be asked to be to give an equation of a line and um, so I'm asking a couple things. One, what is the equation of a line and what are the intercepts for each line? So if you look at the blue line, this vertical line, name two points that are on that line. So if I, from here I can see if I go back one, two, three, I'm at that point. So x is going to be 3, y could be 0, or 1, or 2, or 3, or negative 10. x is always going to be the same, though, because that line doesn't move. It's always at negative 3. So I just named two random points. What's the repeating thing? The repeating thing here is the x. And that means that I have a constant equation, x equals negative 3. What's the x-intercept? Well, the x-intercept is where this graph crosses the x-axis, and it's actually right there at negative 3. But what's the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is where this gra graph crosses the y-axis. And if you look at that, it's never going to cross the y-axis because it is vertical and parallel to that y-axis. So we would say it does not exist. We don't have a y-intercept there. Okay, on the purple one, name two points on this line. If x is 0, y is 3. If x is 4, y is 3. If x is negative 4, y is 3. So what we can start to see is all of our points are going to have 3 in that second spot. So what's repeating? It's the y value that's repeating. Therefore, it's y equals 3. And the x-intercept, if you look at the x-intercept, where does this purple line ever intersect the, the x-axis? Well, it's parallel to it. It's never going to. So this is another case where this, we have an intercept that does not exist. But the y-intercept is right here at 3, just like everything else with that y. So there's the intercepts and the equations of those lines. But how do you find intercepts normally? Well, intercepts, again, are those places where a graph crosses the axis. And so it never crosses the x-axis unless y is 0. And it never crosses the y-axis unless x is 0. I think I pointed to the wrong thing. But in order to get the x-intercept, you make y 0. In order to get the y-intercept, you make x 0. So it's always the opposite of what you want. So for this one, to find the x-intercept for this equation, we set y equal to 0. So where we used to have y, we plug in a 0. You can see that 2 times 0 just cancels out, and we're left with negative x equals negative 3. Of course, we can't stop there because we need to divide both sides by negative 1, and when we do that, we get x equals 3. So a equals 3. The, the abbreviation for x-intercept is not x. The x-intercept is abbreviated by a. Or if you want to state it is as an ordered pair, we would say the x-intercept is 3, 0. You can't just say x equals 3 because x equals 3 would actually look like a, a vertical line at 3, right? We can't just say that. We just saw how these, when you have x equals a number or y equals a number, you have a vertical or horizontal line. So we want to make sure that we're not using x and y and we're using a for x-intercept or state it out fully. All right, so y-intercept, you're going to make x equal to 0. If I do that, I get negative 0 plus 2y is negative 3. Obviously, negative 0 just drops out, and I get 2y equals negative 3. And then I want to uh, divide both sides by 2, and that gives me y equals negative 3 over 2. So b is negative 3 over 2. b is our y-intercept. And then if I uh, want to state that as an ordered pair, I have the y-intercept is 0, negative three halves. All right, to find the slope of an equation, you subtract your y's on the top and your x's on the bottom. That subscript just says you have two different y's and you have two different x's. So if this is my point, I might say that this is my x sub 1 and this is my x sub 2, my y sub 1 and my y sub 2, but two different ones. So if I plug that in, I have 9 minus 5. That's subtracting my y's on the top. And the, the partner of 9 is 2, so that goes directly under it. So then 2 minus and then negative 4. The, the uh, equation has a negative in it, so if I add another negative, that negative negative makes it plus. And so I have 9 minus 5 is 4, and 2 plus 4 is 6. And then, of course, every time you get a slope, you want to reduce it to lowest terms. So let's say you did the slope formula and you came out with 0 over negative 8. What does that look like? Well, 0 divided by anything is 0, so the slope would just be 0. What if you had negative 4 over negative 9? Two negatives, you don't want to leave that. You want to simplify that to be 4 ninths. What about if you get something like 10 over 1? When you divide by 1, you just make that 10. You always want to simplify these. Um, if you go to graph them, it might be nice to keep that 1 under there. And what if you have 5 over 0? Well, you cannot divide by 0. If you try it on your calculator, you're going to get an error message. So go ahead and 
uh, look at that, that's going to be undefined. If you have something that's undefined, we sometimes say no slope or undefined slope. And if you have something like this, negative 6 over 20, you just want to make sure you reduce that to lowest terms. Okay, what about interpreting lines? So when you interpret this line, um, you know what, we're at 10 minutes. I'm going to stop and uh, do the second half of this on another another video. So have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.